Hello people, this is David from languagegrinder.com. Uh, today I'm going to start a series of videos uh, for beginners who are starting a new language, starting to learn a new foreign language. Uh, this video will be about the, uh, the things, the, uh, the arsenal of stuff that you'll need to learn a language on your own or basically by, your, by yourself. A lot of people ask me for advice. Um, about how to start a language or how to learn a language. I uh, actually thought I'd just make this video and I can refer them to it. So uh, it'll make it easier for them to, to get started. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people, when they start learning a language, they will call a school or they will look for a, look for a class where they can learn the language. And I think this is probably one of the slowest ways to learn because uh, only you know what you want to learn and uh, how much you want to learn and how much time you want to spend on it. So I highly recommend, if you want to learn a language, to uh, start by yourself. And uh, of course, you can't start with nothing. Uh, you need to go out and buy some materials, or you can borrow them or take them off from the library, whatever. But you need to get some materials. And uh, in this in this video, I will show you what I buy every time I, I start learning a, a new language. Um, and I recommend it highly, uh, these things, for, for you as well. Um, I'll go by you know the stages in which you learn a language and uh, explain what materials you'll need at that stage. Basically, uh, learn, the first thing is to learn the alphabet. Uh, very important. A lot of people, I mean, a lot of students actually came to me and told me they want to learn English or they want to learn this language, but they don't want to learn the alphabet. And um, I won't even start teaching them if they if they don't agree that they will memorize the alphabet first. Um, I can't understand how you would even want to learn a language without knowing the alphabet. Um, even if it's Chinese or Japanese, I mean, or Arabic that have like difficult al alphabets to learn, it's still very worth it and makes it much easier to learn if you first learn the alphabet. And uh, I think the perfect tool for that is one of these, a smartphone, iPhone or a Android based a smartphone. There's tons of apps you can download which will uh, which will teach you the the alphabet and usually they will have like games uh, quizzes uh, that will help you to learn the alphabet very quickly um, I'm using that right now for uh, Japanese well I did use it for Japanese for hiragana and uh, katakana uh, so yeah so for the alphabet like a smartphone is recommended of course if you don't have a smartphone or a tablet or this kind of device you could look online. Uh, they have some Java-based uh, alphabet learning apps on there, or you could always just use the flashcard method. I just find the alphabet of the target language with its IPA and English equivalent, and just practice learning what sound the letters make. And uh, once you know the letters, at least like what sound they make or around what sound they make, you can move on to the next step. Usually this will take about, I, I, depending on the language, you know, one to two weeks. Uh, but yeah, the next next uh, thing you should have is uh, what I call a dialogue book. Now, of course, it's not called a dialogue book. It's uh, a textbook. And uh, this is basic Japanese. And it's basically just uh, what we're looking for is a book with dialogues and with audio, either a CD or MP3 that you can download. You must have audio and it must have dialogues. And of course, the dialogue should have uh, the English translation beside it. Uh, for some more rare languages, you, it'll be difficult to find this kind of book, and you'll have to um, use other met methods, which uh, I can explain later. But yeah, um, doesn't really matter about what, how much they explain the dialogue or, or the grammar. I mean, it is helpful, but uh, the most important thing is just that it has a lot of dialogue and uh, the audio, that's number one thing. I'll get more into more in depth with this later, but yeah, for now, you will need one of those. The next thing is um, vocabulary book. This is not a dictionary. It's much different. This is a vocabulary book. I use this uh, quick mastery of vocabulary, and uh, this will have vocabulary words. It doesn't matter. It can just be a list of words with the translation, and uh, it will have in each section, like here we have uh, animals, and then you'll have uh, plants, 
you will have um, events, occupations, different kinds of shops, um, at school, at a building, you know, different modes of tra transportation. Uh, this is very, very useful. And um, don't think you're going to get away with the dictionary because dictionaries are horrible in for this use, of course. Um, and I'll get into why you will need one of these in a different video. But uh, yeah, look for a vocabulary book. Very useful if you can find it in your target language. Uh, next thing, I actually don't have one of these in Japanese yet, but it's a phrase book like that you buy before you go on vacation. And um, these are also very useful because they have a lot of very basic sentences uh, which you will want to know. And uh, you can just go through this and learn which sentences you think that you'll need. Uh, dialogue books, they don't have very many sentences and you you will need to know how to say a certain, uh, I mean, how to ask, uh, you know, I've lost my ex, right? Or like, um, you know, do you have any rooms available? These kind of sentences, like, you want to go through here and find the ones that you, uh, you will need to use and, and learn those. Uh, it's very useful. I'll, I'll get into more of this uh, a bit later, but yeah, for now, uh, a phrase book is also very helpful. Next is a grammar book. You don't need anything too thick, just basic grammar. This is very helpful because the uh, dialogue books or the textbooks often just have one explanation of grammar and uh, they sometimes will not get too far into it, but a grammar book will explain it a lot better. So when you get stuck in the dialogue book at a certain grammar, you could always look in another book and often they'll have a different way of explaining it and that'll help you to learn it. Also, uh, I mean, I, I even just flip through here and I look for, you find stuff that you didn't know that you wanted to learn and uh, you just learn it. So it's, a, it's also a very helpful thing. Uh, next is a, a small notebook. And uh, I say small because it should be something that can fit in your pocket or in your bag. Somewhere where you can carry it around and have it very handy. And uh, this is very important. I don't think that a smartphone can replace a small notebook like this. And uh, it's always helped me tremendously when learning languages. I always write in the front words that I've learned. and the back, I write words that I wish I knew. And uh, what I mean is, for instance, if you go to um, a restaurant and you're ordering and uh, you don't know how to say um, mustard, you know, you'll write mustard, right? And um, maybe you're ordering and you wanted to say, give me um, a lot of mustard or extra mustard, you know? And you don't know the word for extra, so then you'll write extra, you know, in there. And maybe at the time you don't have your dictionary handy or your iPhone. Uh, so you will write down these words and then when you go home, you'll have a chance to look them up or ask a friend how to say that. How do I say I want extra mustard on my hamburger? And they will tell you how, and then you have it in there and you'll learn it. And uh, this is very helpful. And then you can look through and review like, oh yeah, I wanted to, you know, how to say that. This is a very effective way to learn because your brain is thirsting for this information. I mean, you're up there, you're hungry, you wanted extra mustard on your hamburger, you didn't know how to say it, so you didn't get it. So you'll always want to uh, know how to say that. Like, uh, your brain will be thirsting for the information and you'll learn it very quickly. Uh, and then in the front, I write, words that I learned. Um, I mean, if I was talking to a friend and he said, um, he said a word like a uh, grapefruit and I asked him, what is that? And he said like, uh, I don't know, look in your dictionary or you look it up and then you write how you say grapefruit in that language. Uh, this And then this way you can review words that you heard from other people. And um, this I think is the best way to learn vocabulary because you are encountering these words in everyday life or you're you're needing these words in your everyday life and uh, because of that you will learn them much quicker than just studying word lists or learning a vocabulary book or list or whatever. Very useful. And the next and last thing which uh, is like a secret weapon of mine to learn a language. A lot of people overlook these 
but um, deadly. These are deadly when learning uh, languages, vocabulary, but it's important to know uh, which ones to buy. It's important to know which which features and how to use those features, which I will get into in a, in a, in a video. Uh, but yeah, if you can pick one of these up, I mean, 50 to 100 bucks. And um, excellent, excellent. Much, much better than using a normal MP3 player or a, a iPhone or whatever. Very useful, I'll get into that. Yeah, so that's it. Um, if you have this stuff, you don't need all of this, of course, like this is just my suggestion, but uh, with these tools, uh, it will make starting to learn a language uh, much, much easier and uh, help you a lot on your on your way to learning a language. So uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you liked the video. Uh, please give me a like and uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos. Thank you very much.